sometimes this hobby can be an absolute roller coaster of emotions. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, um, you know back in C's uh, when I was doing my pickups and what we got, um, the haul from the South East Arachnid Show uh, down in Ashford, we picked up two mature male avic avics. We got two mature males, which are a decent size, they're about eight, eight, nine centimetres each, I think. And we've got these two mature males because, as you know, we've got my two females up here. And talking about the size of them, um, possibly, possibly ready for a bit of a breeding project. We now have two mature males, which will rehouse into some small enclosures. We'll put them up on the shelf. We'll see if there's anything there. Um, we might have some avic babies on uh, tarantula rookies. Uh, tarantula rookie stream soon. Who knows? So yeah, after picking the uh, males up from uh, Luke at Seas and me thinking in my head at the same time two years ago, I was irrationally hugely scared of spiders. We bought them home and didn't really know what to do with them. Um, we had them a week, I had my birthday, and then a couple of days later we had a live. And I knew the male was ready because he had made a sperm web. Um, I managed to catch the footage of him making this, actually swinging around, laying the sperm web down, and then unbelievably loading his emboli. Um, and the footage was quite cool. I'm really pleased I caught this because uh, it was another amazing thing to watch. Huge emotional high again. Um, from watching this um, and then we had a live and we were ch I was chatting to Jackie and Mark and decided to put the male up on the shelf next to the females um, and we had an immediate response an immediate response from the female drumming back so I put my big boy pants on and the next day we put the spiders together so we've got the Males caught bark just out of the enclosure and just laying on the front of hers. We're going to see if they're interested today. I'm not going to push it. I'm extremely nervous about doing this simply because this little dude, I don't want him to be lunch. She did eat last night, but after the drumming you probably saw on the video, she's ready. And with her molting, um, I think I've probably got just under two months before an egg sack, so. Uh, well, before she molts again maybe so I want to sort of see if this happens it's it's going to be a tight schedule but let's get the camera in a little bit and set up so we can see what goes on in their enclosure shall we is she interested in coming out? Don't know what's going to happen here. We don't want him to be lunch. Let's just introduce him and see. Are you that way? He's tapping, you can see he's tapping. He is drumming away. Oh, let's get that.
she is literally he is in he is definitely inserted And they're done, I think. Right, come on, let's get you back out then. Let's get you back down. Come on, bud. That's alright. We're getting back to safety of his own place, I think. He wants to go for another go. Could be going for round two here. He's still drumming away. He still wants more of this action. He's either brave or extremely stupid. But he's having a proper wander into her enclosure now. Take the lid back off so he's got another escape route just in case it's needed. She's down the back of her court mark. She's dropped a long way down, but he is. She is not interested, I don't think. Yeah, I think you're pushing your luck with her now, mate. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll see. She's... Definitely got... Definitely got marks on her lower abdomen. That's not on the enclosure. That's that's on her abdomen. That all that all that from him. That's all from him on her. You can see all around her furrow and stuff. So we we'll just have to have our fingers crossed. I guess. Look at those feet. We've got the challenge of getting the little man out because he's uh he wants to go for round three. Best part of all is we've managed to walk him round from underneath the uh, court park round the bum here, put the enclosure up nice and high, and he's just walked straight back into here. I think he had three goes. Three goes. She's up the back there, not interested anymore. Um, 
and he's back in there. But we may have to pair them again at some point very soon. I do have two other males, we'll see how that goes. It took a while for um, the female to show any interest and as you can see from the footage we went through and he ventured in there all in the uh, rehouse central um, and we went through and we got some good footage of the male in there pairing with the female. She was very gentle with him um, and I think they got together three times and over that course of the pairings I was just draw, uh, jaw to the floor. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. Um, it was so exciting to watch and witness and I'm absolutely amazed that that was my emotional response to seeing these two beautiful spiders just doing their thing. It was just uh, unreal really to, to, to think that I was witnessing this and it was just uh, yeah, just an amazing experience. My heart was pounding. Um, I was anxious that he was going to get out okay. Um, but it was it was just wonderful. It was wonderful to to witness and wonderful to view. And I, I just couldn't believe that I was being part of this. So that was that was really cool. And then after the pairings, nothing happened. Nothing happened. I marked the dates of the pairings up on the um, on the enclosure of the female, and we left her. We left her alone and I, I she got to the stage where i was suspecting that she was just going to molt out because there was no signs that she was laying any sort of webbing down um, there was no signs that she was getting larger at all apart from the fact she was going a lot darker on her abdomen which i just assumed was going to become a molt and then on the 30th of april i came home i'd gone out for a couple of hours i came home and she was on an egg sac. She was sitting on a small but very definite egg sac. And again, my heart was pounding. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that she had actually finally produced it because they were paired on the 9th of February. So, you know, it's a good couple of months, almost three months, um, to put the egg sac down. And uh, yeah, she, she did it. So we left the egg sac. We left the egg sac for 35 days. And then we pulled the egg sac on day 35 after um, a lot of advice from a lot of good people. Dave, Luke, Chris, a few others. Um, day 35 was the day we were aiming for. So we pulled the sack. Okay, so enclosure's down. In the moment of truth, we're going to try and get her to let go of this. She's been holding on to it very securely every day so I don't know if she's going to give this up very easily at all but we will see if we can even get into and through her webbing she has made a very solid and strong web here Feel very guilty for destroying it all, but needs must. Okay, let's see if she'll let this thing go. Okay, so she's off the sack itself. I'll just move her. Cross, come on. Okay, let's have a look at her quickly. She's still in beautiful condition. Absolutely stunning. I do love the avicularia. But for now, Let's get a look at the sack and we'll sort her out in a moment. She's probably going to look around for a long time wondering where that's gone. Right, let's get her out of the way. Right. 
doesn't feel heavy at all. I actually don't know whether there's anything in here. Um, feels extremely light. Feels extremely light indeed. But having never actually felt a proper exact, it's very difficult to know. She's been holding on to it very, very well for the whole time, so if there's nothing in here, I'll be very surprised, but it does feel extremely light. So many layers on these things. seems like we've got an awful lot of infertile eggs seems like she's been sitting on an awful lot oh, you're not seeing any of this are you it's been 35 days I'm not sure what's gone on here, but we'll have a look. We'll put them in the nursery pot and we'll have a look anyway and just see what's going on. And um, as you can see from the footage, when we pulled the sack, there was some good eggs. They all looked okay. I sent photos to a few people, but none of them had developed. So we were like, quite upset at the time. Um, yeah, we'd had a lot of highs with the pairings and, and the fact that she had laid the egg sack. And then we had this, we had nothing there and we were confused. The eggs didn't look bad. The eggs looked really good. And it, we, we were just really confused and quite upset by the fact that none of them had developed. But a few people messaged me and said, don't give up hope just yet put them into the nursery. So that's what we did. We put them into the nursery and we waited. And a few days later, we had a couple of eggs with legs. And then a few days later after that, we had a few more. And I think out of all the eggs we had, um, which was about 64 eggs, we had a handful, maybe two handfuls, 14 eggs with legs. And they were doing okay. We had the humidity in there, we had the nursery pot with the stockings, and they, they were moving around, they were active. Um, so we left them to it. Um, every couple of days I'd check in on them and just have a quick look over the top. Didn't want to disturb them too much. Um, but unfortunately a few of them didn't start making it. They started to turn and the egg, some of the eggs weren't developing so they went bad. So we took those out and we took um, a good few of the eggs with legs that just stopped moving. They seem to inflate and go like a dark purple colour, um, but not molt. They didn't get through it. They, they seem to struggle and just pass away. And we eventually got reduced down to a single, well, there was three, that looked like they were going to turn to nymphs. But two of them didn't. Two of them didn't make it. So they they just passed away. They We went into the nursery pot one morning and they were just curled up in a ball and brown. So we wasn't sure what was going on. The humidity was nice and high. You could see that there was lots of water underneath them. They were kept nice and warm, but one, one did make it. One was a fighter. One sort of wasn't going to fall fate with the rest of the egg sac. They decided just, I'm going to, I'm going to pull through. And we opened up the nursery pot one morning and we had this nymph, a single nymph out of the entire sack. So we aptly named it Nemo straight away. Um, tiny little thing, but yeah, we thought, brilliant, you know, our, our hearts again were filled, like, you know, emotions were super high again. Um, we couldn't believe it, we had this nymph. So we rehoused Nemo into a small sling vial 
out of the nursery pot, a bit of substrate, some cork bark, a leaf, um, fake plant, all in there so it had some anchor points, this and the other, um, not too crowded but enough room for it to hide and make some webbing and do its thing. And Nemo was doing fine, Nemo was doing absolutely fine. Um, few people were asking me how they were getting on and yeah they were they were good and this is leading us into September like so you know considering the egg sac was produced back in April and then we were at the end of May start of June when we when we pulled the uh, egg sac out and then after June um, we'd had Nemo so we'd had Nemo you know all through the summer you know almost three months and we we were feeding Nemo was eating um, mealworm sushi some flies various other little bit cricket legs roach legs that sort of stuff um, Nemo was eating Nemo was growing we had one malt we had a malt and it was looking good it was really looking good and then last week um, I was going to put this video out and we had some other things we had to take care of with the other rehousings as you know so I thought okay that's an opportunity that I can actually get some final footage for this video and unfortunately I went into Nemo's enclosure on Monday to do the feedings and Nemo was on the court bark but in a dev curl so I carefully picked out the um, court bark and unfortunately it looks like between Sunday and Monday, Nemo passed away. So again, the the feeling had just dropped, you know. So I did check that it wasn't molting. Um, you know, carefully had a look round, but no, you can you can tell, you can tell when the spider's molting or when the spider's passed. And although I did try in vain and put some water from a syringe onto Nemo's fangs, leave them on the back, see if there was going to be any movement. Two days later, still nothing. So, unfortunately, yeah, we didn't have a single spider survive from the egg sac. And after investing so much with Nemo and the, the progression through it, it's just been an extreme roller coaster of emotions. Um, and I'm gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. I know it's probably nothing that I've done, but at the same time, when you get so attached to animals, it, it's really difficult to take. So I was debating whether to make this video. Um, I'm not doing it for sympathy. I'm not doing it for that. I, I'm just being transparent because you guys support me so much and I've got a lot of supporters now um, with the memberships and subscribers and people making comments and stuff. The channel's active and you're here to see the journey and so the journey needs to be completely transparent. So whether it's brilliant news or not so good news, I will, I will share it with you because you guys deserve that. So anyway, that's today's video. Um, I'm not going <laughs> to say like if you liked it because um, I hope you didn't like the outcome um, but anyway yeah unfortunately Nemo is now making his webs or her webs up in the sky so all I can say is thanks for watching guys thanks a lot for the uh, continued support and um, hopefully we'll see you on the live tonight if not, we'll catch up with you next week. Thank you.